Hi, I'm Gary Hall Sr. from the Race Club, and today we're very pleased and honored and privileged to have with us one of the most respected, uh, most renowned sports psychotherapists in the history of the world, Dr. Harold Solomon from Hofstra University. And do you mind if I call you Dr. Solomon? Yes, I, I prefer to be called Dr. Solomon. Solomon? Solomon, yes. Sol Solomon. Dr. Solomon, let me, let me start with your research, which is fascinating to Be me. Before you go there, I just want to say I'm a big fan of you, Dr. Hall. Well, because you. your accomplishments uh, in the pool and out of the pool have been uh, uh, remarkable, uh, especially in my field. Uh, we hold you in high regard uh, in the psychotherapist community. And uh, for that, I would just like to shake your hand. Well, well thank you very much. Uh, but let's get back to your research, which to me is, is so fascinating. And recently, uh, some of your studies showed that there was an alarmingly high rate of psychosis among retired athletes. Uh, Absolutely. This is scary. I mean, what, what's going on in, in the world to have this happen? Well, it's, it's really amazing that you bring this up. Obviously, you've read my work. And um, for that, I want to thank you as well. It's not the typical lay person that could uh, dive into the research that we performed on these athletes and really uh, come about with uh, a general understanding of what's really happening to these athletes. Uh, you, you're, you're familiar with uh, uh, traumatic stress syndrome? Yes, a little bit. Then that's, that's referring to, say, soldiers in battle. Correct. Well, there's an equivalent type of psychosis that occurs upon, among athletes. And uh, it's, it's not really a result of any specific kind of, uh, how would you say, trauma to the brain right. or anything. It is a direct result of the void created when they are no longer famous. Hmm. The root cause of everything is fame or perceived fame. So take, for example, a figure like, I don't know, Lawrence Taylor incredible linebacker for the Giants. Right. LT is what he went by. That's right. Hofstra, so I knew uh, New York. A few, went to a few games, had an opportunity to interview him, went to some parties with him. It was incredible times. But it was the fame that has created what I like to refer to as this type of athlete psychosis. Now, Lawrence Taylor if you read the news, you know what Lawrence Taylor is now. I, I say it's a direct result of the void created by the absence of being famous. So fame, though, you know, in much affinity to much, most people who want to be famous, it is a drug. And when you take it away, there are symptoms. And this athlete psychosis syndrome that I'm referring to, APS, it's a very scary thing. So it would be safe to assume that these psychotic episodes that we're seeing aren't related to the exercise, but maybe more to the fame. What would be your advice for people out there that are trying to become Well, first of all, I just want to tell you, you're, you're fine. Okay, Dr. Hall, well, that's you were a swimmer, swimming, you know, you've got Phelps, he's famous, the rest of the lot, you don't have anything to worry about on a psychological level. It's the mega athletes I'm referring to, the Beckhams of the world, the Kobe Bryants, the Shaquille O'Neals. It's those guys who have to be really careful about fame. So what would you recommend to some of these famous athletes who are out there that may be looking at a padded cell someday? I mean, what do they do to try to prevent this horrible thing from happening? Prevention. That's a good... Prevention is the best medicine, Doc. The first thing you need to do is understand that it's fleeting. You understand? The fame is not going to be there forever. Ask Wilt Chamberlain. This is a guy... This is a guy who espoused to have slept with over 10,000 women in his day. In his day, in his prime, after he was no longer on television dunking the basketball, 
I'm sure that number shrank to around, I don't know, four or five a week. So what I'm saying is the fame is fleeting. Okay, so if you get into the game knowing that the fame won't be there forever, you start out with a better mental framework from which to go about your business as an athlete. I see. Well, that's that's pretty good, pretty good advice, um, I think, Dr. Solomon. And, and I appreciate you, you coming all the way here to Florida uh, for, from Hofstra to share this uh, very alarming information and, and news about the uh, athletes. And, uh, and we certainly uh, appreciate your time here and, and uh, hope that we can uh, have you back someday on our show. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.